Hello everybody, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. At the end of the last video, we had just discovered that there was a fairly significant uh, difference between the way my spreadsheet that I'm replacing with the software works and with the way the software is working. Uh, let me show you. Uh, the way the spreadsheet works is, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically what it assumes is that everything, every withdrawal, which is really more like a sale, every sale is subject to capital gains tax uh, in its entirety. Um, and the way the software works is it assumes that every, well actually let me, let me back up. The spreadsheet assumes that every sale is subject to capital gains cap tax until all the taxable gains have been subjected to tax. And the way the spreadsheet works is it assumes that uh, nothing is subject to capital gains tax until all of the principal has been sold. All of the cost, all the purchases have all been sold off. Uh, neither of those models is correct, to my understanding. Again, I'm not a financial expert. This is not financial advice. But um, my understanding is that you're supposed to actually calculate capital gains on every sale. So you look at the cost of your purchase, and you look at what you got when you sold it, and the difference is the capital gains, and that part is subject to tax. Um, and what we have in the spreadsheet is one abstraction. What we have in the software is a different abstraction. Now, the software as an abstraction is a bad abstraction. It's a it's an optimistic per, uh, abstraction. What it what it's going to say, I believe, is that you're not paying as much in tax as you actually will be. So it's going to tell you that you have more money than you have. The spreadsheet is a pessimistic uh, assumption, uh, which makes it a better abstraction. Um, and at the end of the last video, I wasn't really sure what to do about this, so I said I was going to go off and think about it and look into it further. And what I've decided to do is, uh, in the long term, I would like to uh, implement a more realistic, uh, a more realistic abstraction. Um, in the short term, I need the stock market year to not be so optimistic. And in particular, I want it to match the spreadsheet because I have a, a very complicated spreadsheet. This is a much simplified version. I have a very complicated spreadsheet that I want to be able to compare my work to um, so that I can check. I mean, so I can check what I'm doing. So that's the plan. Uh, today, in this video, and uh, however long it takes, I'm going to fix up this, this program to work exactly the same way as the spreadsheet. Long term, we'll put in a more realistic abstraction, but that's very long term because I want to get in all the features that are currently in the spreadsheet into the software um, and uh, before I do that. So uh, that's what the plan is for today. First, though, um, Morton in the on the comments uh, had a great catch, which is that when I modified dollars, if you recall, I modified um, dollars to uh, to round off pennies and equals. Well, if you two things are equals, their hash code has to be equal. Otherwise, if you store something in a hash table, it will fail. Um, and I didn't do that. I didn't change the way hash table works uh, or the hash code works to be the same behavior, and that was a bug. Um, that is not a present in the code right now because I'm not using a hash table. I may not ever use a hash table, but it's the kind of thing that would be such a pain to figure out. So um, we need to fix that. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Oh, that's I, I upgraded Eclipse um, for my training course, which is starting. Uh, well, I'm recording this Sunday night, so it's starting tomorrow. And um, wow, I don't know what this is, but what I do know is that 
my content assist isn't working. Let's see. Let's just try cleaning. And if, if that doesn't work well, hmm, guess I have to do it the old fashioned way. I guess I could go back to the old version of Eclipse. I still have that on my system. I think, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, that's not going to work. I don't think. Come on, tests. Yeah. Okay. This should be really easy to fix. At least it would be if I wasn't having all these issues. Okay, so hash code. Well, we can ignore all of that. Way too complicated. And um, we'll just cast well, we'll just return uh, round off pennies pass to an int. Should be good enough. Let's see if I can catch that. There. Is that going to keep coming up? Oh. All right. Um, so that's fixed. I think this will just automatically work. I don't know if I even want to. Uh... That should work. Yep. All right, so that's fixed. Um, again, that wouldn't have hurt anything now, but in the future, if I had ever tried to put a dollar in a hash table, it would have been one of those nasty Heisenbugs that takes forever to debug, and you guys don't want to see that. So and I don't want to go through it. So thanks very much, Morton. I really appreciate the comment. Uh, that is done. So now we have to uh, fix the capital gains tax. Um, so let's do that. So get rid of that and that. So in our cap here, let's uh, let's expand this test to be a little more clear. So our capital gains is going to equal our starting balance um, oh this is going to be obnoxious okay I'm going to pause the video um, I'm going to pause the video and go back to the old version of clips until I can figure this out off camera so I will be right back okay I'm back uh, sorry about that so I'm just went back to the previous version of Eclipse when I've got more time I'll get the new version working. So the capital gains is equal to the starting balance um, minus the starting principal. Let me just make sure I've got that right. That should equal uh, $7,000. And just to make sure. Yeah. All right. So um, what I want to do is say that if we withdraw the capital gains, then um, let's see. I'm going to pull this out into its own test for now.
capital gains tax. Um, is paid first, I suppose, is what I want to say. So, um, so withdraw, if we withdraw the capital gains, we should pay uh, Pay tax on all withdrawals, so really sales, and I should probably change that. tax on all withdrawals until all capital gains withdrawn. I'll, I'll keep the old language for now just to be consistent. So that means that we're paying, again assuming a 25%, um, 7000 Hold on one second. Let me just make sure this is right. Yeah, starting principle is three thousand. Um, so seven thousand divided by uh, 0.75. Yeah, that would be a ninety-three thirty-three. Oh, uh, but the actual capital gains tax incurred would be. 2,333. That's the way I want it to work. Uh, well, but I think the way it's going to work is it's going to say, I thought it was going to say zero. Why is it saying 1,333? Um, hmm. Maybe I just no. Well, that's a little surprising. Okay, so it's that's right. That's that's a reflection of the fact that if I'm withdrawing seven thousand, then um, it wants to withdraw the principal first. So it's withdrawing three thousand and then four thousand more. Four thousand divided by point seven five minus four thousand is one thousand three hundred thirty three. That's where it's getting one thousand three hundred thirty three from. That is the current behavior, but it's not the behavior I want. So I've only got a minute left to record. Um, let's see, capital gains tax recurred, so capital gains withdrawn is going to equal to total withdrawals subtract to zero starting principle. That's not what I want. I want um, total capital gains subtract to zero uh, capital gains. So I get that in under the wire? Maybe. Oh, no. Okay, well, that will have to come up next time. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you next time.